In November, Minnesotans will vote on Election Day for or against a controversial pair of amendments, one upholding the definition of traditional marriage and the other on requiring photo ID at the polls. We will be examining the photo ID constitutional amendment. The voter ID law has been an issue since the heavily contested elections of Al Franken as senator over the incumbent Norm Coleman. The election was so tight that voter fraud was alleged and recounts and legal challenges mounted. In the end, Franken was elected, but a need had arisen in the eyes of many to clean up the Minnesota election system. Dan McGrath of Minnesota Majority has led the charge to require voter ID laws since the 2008 election. He has turned up instances of voter irregularities and fraud and has helped draft voter ID legislation. In 2010, Minnesota Governor Mark Dayton vetoed the law that was approved largely on a partisan basis. He says the law would disenfranchise many voters who could not afford an ID. In an effort to make the matter into law, the Minnesota Majority and ProtectMyVote.com people have sought to make the issue into a constitutional amendment that would have the power to bypass the governor's veto. This puts the matter directly in the hands of the voter. Over 80 organizations in the state oppose the voter ID amendment, saying it would serve to restrict voter turnout and disenfranchise voters unable to obtain ID. Secretary of State Mark Ritchie, who opposes the law, changed the name of the ballot initiative without the consent of the legislature. The issue was taken to the court, and the Supreme Court of Minnesota has ruled that the secretary did not have the right to change the name of the initiative on the ballot where the legislature had already done so. Opposition for the law includes the Secretary of State, the Governor, and the League of Women Voters, just to name a few, and most recently, OurVoteOurFuture.org. On Thursday, Dan McGrath debated Our Vote, Our Future's Duran Schrantz on public television. At first, the voter restriction amendment might look like common sense reform. But the more Minnesotans really look under the hood, of this ill-conceived amendment, we see that it's actually an extreme makeover of our election system. If this amendment passes, it's going to do three things. One, it's going to cost Minnesotans a lot. Two, it will create a complex two-tiered voting system and make absentee voting and election day registration difficult, if not impossible. And three, it will have serious unintended consequences of potentially locking out hundreds of thousands of eligible voters, including seniors and active duty military. The voter ID amendment does four simple things. It requires voters in person to provide photographic identification when voting. It requires the state to make identification available at no charge. It requires a second chance ballot called a provisional ballot in case someone is unable to present photo identification on election day for whatever reason. <clears throat> it also requires all voters be treated substantially the same in how we verify their identity and eligibility. I think everyone would agree that we should treat people as much the same as is possible even if we're using different processes uh, to vote. Everything else about the amendment that you'll be hearing, that you have been hearing, is wild speculation at best. If it's not in the amendment, it's not going to happen. It's that simple. Thank you. Here is Hennepin County Attorney Mike Freeman on the issue of voter fraud at his debate recently with John Fund. Minnesotans vote in large numbers. We're number one in the nation, election after election, in voter turnout. And we vote honestly. Visit any polling place and you'll find real community. People patiently standing in line, chatting with their neighbors, and proudly putting on I Voted stickers. This voter restriction amendment will cost our communities and counties at least $50 million to implement. That's $50 million that will be spent on a problem that doesn't exist. Wall Street Journal and Fox News contributor John Fund. This is America. We can make it easy to vote and hard to cheat. That is our goal. We can do both at the same time. For more information, go to theamericanmillenniumonline.com.